You know what? I honestly wish I had my Eagles helmet. Like I used to have one as a kid. <laughs> like it was pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. I love that. But then I and just you? also admitted that I'm an Eagles fan. So I think that's a little dangerous. Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie Meaning. And I'm Bridget Riley. Welcome to Hypothetically, Hypothetically episode three, season two, episode three. So first in the honor of doing football, I'm gonna do a little quick pass to Mackenzie. I'm ready. Oh, got it. So today we are talking about football, even though this is not a football. Um, we'll be talking about the team, the coaches, their record, and how their season could have gone if they had gotten to play. Marist football is very interesting, though, as they're the only team on campus that doesn't compete in the MAC. They play in the Pioneer Football League, which is one of the nation's football-only conferences. Yeah, it's definitely true. The football team has been competing in the Pioneer League since 2009. And they previously were in the MAC conference um, beginning in 1993 when they moved from Division Three to Division One um, in the Metropolitan Conference. They were in the ACFC and the Liberty Conference as well. Since this transition, the team has shown some noteworthy success under Coach Jim Parity in regard to producing three NFL players, Jason Myers, Terrence Fide, and Michael Rios. But in recent years, the program has been in a bit of a rut which may be, be even a generous term. So I guess we'll just get into it. <laughs> so this 2020 season is Parody's 29th season as head coach, his 30th in the program. And under his name, there have been four league championships um, in 1994, 2006, and 2007, and 2013 when FIDE was on the team. There has not been a winning season though since 2013 when the team went eight and three, which set a varsity record of eight wins, and they went seven and one in conference play. So a bit of some time there. Yep. Um, <laughs> since then, the overall records have been either a mix of four and seven or five and six. They haven't been too far from one or the other, um, with the most recent season coming out of it being four and seven overall with a four and four and four in conference play. Will they be able to get out of this repetitive rut? I guess who's to say? <laughs> um, and maybe get at least six wins this year? Maybe. But by the looks of the, some of the stats, um, that suggests not. <laughs> it's kind of a tight chance. So Mackenzie, who are your top picks to make the season the best since 2013? Maybe. Maybe. Um, so there are quite a few players this season who have the power to help this program be successful. Offensively, running back Hunter Cobb is a beast in the backfield. He leads the team with 674 rushing yards and 13 touchdowns. Um, wide receiver Joe Petro led the team last season with an average of 21 yards per catch. And he was second in receiving yards with 441, and he caught two touchdowns. Defensively, safety Kyle Feltman returns after being named an All-Pioneer Football League second team. Uh, last year, he was second on the team for tackles with 62, and he's really good at making big plays. He can break up passes and intercept the ball. On special teams, Dwayne Menders is the go-to for returns. He ran for a total of 482 yards on returns, and he's also multidimensional. He plays wide receiver as well. He caught 18 passes for 209 yards. And I think, though, that there's a really interesting situation with the quarterbacks on this team. Bridget, why don't you fill us in? I certainly will. So for quarterbacks this season, there's six in total. So three of which have actually have seen playing time. Um, the primary starter that Parody usually goes with is Austin Day. He is a red shirt junior and has had the most experience and time out of all the others. Um, he did see a decent amount of time in his freshman year actually with five game appearances and four of those he did start. This past season, he started in nine out of the 11 games um, having completed 140 out of 234 passes, giving him 59.8%. And this was for 1,651 yards along with eight touchdowns and 10 interceptions. So second today will most likely be his fellow redshirt junior, Luke Strenad. Um, now Strenad didn't see as much time in his freshman year, actually none at all, um, for his freshman year, but his sophomore year, he did. Um, he appeared in eight games out of the 11 and did start in two of them. On his stat sheet, he completed 55 of 109 attempts, giving him 50.5%. 
and sitting at 733 yards. He tallied two touchdowns and also five interceptions. And the third, which is definitely not the least of the three, um, is redshirt sophomore Matt Edwards. He is likely the future leader of this program. Um, it appeared in only two games as a quarterback, but this was his freshman year, so definitely still some time to grow. Um, he completed 16 of 20 passes, going for 80% for 85 yards, racking up a touchdown versus Dartmouth in their last season. Um, while this is a very small sample of college level, level stats, obviously, and it is one game, of course, um, he does show some promising skills, um, and this is a hopeful light for the future of the program, I think. Um, Parity is most likely to stick between Day and Strad um, primarily. However, hopefully Edwards will be sprinkled in there a little bit um, throughout the games more often to get his feet even more wet as he will soon be an upperclassman. Um, with these players this season, they may be able to break the under 500 barrier. We shall see. Uh, but Mackenzie, do you want to get into some of the 2019 collective offensive stats? Absolutely. So Mayor's stats last season compared to the rest of the conference that they play in are pretty lackluster. Uh, while the rest of the Pioneer League averages 34.64 points, Marist averaged 21.55. And in terms of totals, that's 237 points for Marist and 381 for the opponent. If you want to break that down even further, Maris averaged 16 rushing and 11 passing touchdowns last season, while the other teams averaged 25 rushing and 23 passing touchdowns. Maris trails by 120 when it comes down to total plays last season, sitting at 682 compared to 802. Um, and I think that most of the hardship that Maris football faces can be chalked up to the lack of successful production. They trail in touchdowns, they trail in yards, and ultimately they end up trailing in most of their games. So now you might be wondering, what are our overall predictions for the football team this season if they adapt to play? It's definitely difficult to be hopeful with their track record. However, we all know I like to stick with teams that are struggling. But I am liking what I'm seeing in terms of quarterbacks we have available and the returning offensive and defensive stars. What does worry me is obviously those stats McKenzie just mentioned from 2019 compared to the opponents that they face. It's hard to argue with that. Math is math. I think we may, may even break even this season. I'm hopeful to get actually to 500. I don't know about too far over. That might be a stretch. Mackenzie, what do you think? Uh, well, I think that at its core, Maris football is a good football team. The stats clearly show that they have players who can play football and play football very well. Um, but like you were just saying, Bridget, about how they compare to the other team's stats, it's just so hard to be hopeful. They get outplayed, straight up. They just get outplayed. Jim Brady has been coaching the team for 30 years, um, and they've only had one season in the past 10 years where they won more than five games. Uh, last year, they were an even four and four, so I would expect the same performance this year if they had gotten to play. I personally don't know what it takes to change that, and honestly, I don't know if they know either, but something big has to change for them to get a better record because they've been stuck in this rut for so long. Agreed. Hopefully the future is all there. <laughs> it's all there. They just have to put it together. <laughs> Hello. We're in new places, new spaces, because yes. I'm home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I haven't left yet, but I will be. Um, so on the 20th, which was Friday, we found out that um, a certain football player is entering the transfer portal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and today is Sunday, and we just thought we would add a little clip into the video telling you guys the new scoop. So, Mackenzie, who is yes. it? Happening? So, Grant Dixon is entering the transfer portal, which basically means that he has one more year of eligibility because he's a graduate student. So he's going to take his skills and his everything he does somewhere else. Grant Dixon is a linebacker for Marist, or was, I guess I should say. Um, is a graduate student and was captain last year for the 2019 season. Um, last year, he did have a total of 73 tackles, 41 of which were solo stops and 32 were assisted and had an 8.5 tackles for loss. He tied second on the team for four sacks, 
For Dixon's career at Marist, he has 18 tackles for 62 yards. He also has 8.5 sacks for 38 yards. And he has a total of forced um, fumbles of three, and he has six passes defended. Um, he also has 99 total solo tackles and a total of 170 tackles in total. So what this means for Marist football, it honestly, is not that great. Grant is one of their best players. He was first team all uh, Pioneer Football League. He's got great stats, obviously, as Bridget just mentioned, and he is their guy on defense. If they need a big play, if they need something to happen, he's the guy to do it. And I think it's going to be really hard to fill his shoes. Um, but I don't have, I didn't lose all hope for Marist football. I think they still have a great foundation to work off of, but this is definitely a hard blow for their defensive line. I agree. And we'll just have to see, I guess, where Dixon goes. And also because of that, we will see how much it hurts Marist in the long run. Okay, well, this has been Hypothetically, Season 2, Episode 3. Woo! Another one down. Done and done. So we're doing volleyball next, next. so stay tuned. Yes, it's going to be a good one. Not to say not all of our other episodes are not good, but it's going to be a good one. <laughs>